This page assumes familiarity with the terms and components used in polymerase chain reaction. The versatility of PCR has led to a large number of variants. Basic modifications, often only a small modification needs to be made to the standard PCR protocol to achieve a desired goal. Multiplex PCR uses several pairs of primers annealing to different target sequences. This permits the simultaneous analysis of multiple targets in a single sample. For example, in testing for genetic mutations, six or more amplifications might be combined. In the standard protocol for DNA fingerprinting, the targets assayed are often amplified in groups of three or four. Multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification permits multiple targets to be amplified using only a single pair of primers, avoiding the resolution limitations of multiplex PCR. Multiplex PCR has also been used for analysis of microsatellites and SNPs. Variable number of tandem repeats PCR targets areas of the genome that exhibit length variation. The analysis of the genotypes of the sample usually involves sizing of the amplification products by gel electrophoresis. Analysis of smaller VNTR segments known as short tandem repeats is the basis for DNA fingerprinting databases such as CODIS. Asymmetric PCR preferentially amplifies one strand of the target DNA. It is used in some sequencing methods and hybridization probing to generate one DNA strand as product. Thermocycling is carried out as in PCR, but with a limiting amount or leaving out one of the primers. When the limiting primer becomes depleted, replication increases arithmetically through extension of the excess primer. A modification of this process, named Lumia after the exponential PCR, uses a limiting primer with a higher melting temperature than the excess primer to maintain reaction efficiency as the limiting primer concentration decreases mid-reaction. Some modifications are needed to perform long PCR. The original Kono based PCR process did not generate products that were larger than about 400 BP. TAC polymerase can, however, amplify targets of up to several thousand BP long. Since then, modified protocols with TAC enzyme have allowed targets of over 50 kilobytes to be amplified. Nested PCR is used to increase the specificity of DNA amplification. Two sets of primers are used in two successive reactions. In the first PCR, one pair of primers is used to generate DNA products, which may contain products amplified from non-target areas. The products from the first PCR are then used as template in a second PCR, using one or two different primers whose binding sites are located within the first set, thus increasing specificity. Nested PCR is often more successful in specifically amplifying long DNA products than conventional PCR, but it requires more detailed knowledge of the sequence of the target. Quantitative PCR is used to measure the specific amount of target DNA in a sample. By measuring amplification only within the phase of true exponential increase, the amount of measured product more accurately reflects the initial amount of target. Special thermal cyclers are used that monitor the amount of product during the amplification. Quantitative real-time PCR methods use fluorescent dyes, such as SYBR green, or fluorophore containing DNA probes, such as TACMAN, to measure the amount of amplified product as the amplification progresses. Hot start PCR is a technique performed manually by heating the reaction components to the DNA melting temperature before adding the polymerase. In this way, non-specific amplification at lower temperatures is prevented. Alternatively, specialized reagents inhibit the polymerase's activity at ambient temperature either by the binding of an antibody, or by the presence of covalently bound inhibitors that only dissociate after a high temperature activation step. Hot start cold finish PCR is achieved with new hybrid polymerases that are inactive at ambient temperature and are only activated at elevated temperatures. In touchdown PCR, the annealing temperature is gradually decreased in later cycles. The annealing temperature in the early cycles is usually 3 euro 5 degrees Celsius above the standard TM of the primers used, while in the later cycles it is a similar amount below the TM. The initial higher annealing temperature leads to greater specificity for primer binding, while the lower temperatures permit more efficient amplification at the end of the reaction.
Assembly PCR is the synthesis of long DNA structures by performing PCR on a pool of long oligonucleotides with short overlapping segments, to assemble two or more pieces of DNA into one piece. It involves an initial PCR with primers that have an overlap and a second PCR using the products as the template that generates the final full-length product. This technique may substitute for ligation-based assembly. In colony PCR, bacterial colonies are screened directly by PCR, for example, the screen for correct DNA vector constructs. Colonies are sampled with a sterile pipette tip and a small quantity of cells transferred into a PCR mix. To release the DNA from the cells, the PCR is either started with an extended time at 95 degrees Celsius, or with a shortened denaturation step at 100 degrees Celsius and special chimeric DNA polymerase. The digital polymerase chain reaction simultaneously amplifies thousands of samples, each in a separate droplet within an emulsion. Suicide PCR is typically used in paleogenetics or other studies where avoiding false positives and ensuring the specificity of the amplified fragment is the highest priority. It was originally described in a study to verify the presence of the microbe Yersinia pestis in dental samples obtained from 14th century graves of people supposedly killed by plague during the medieval Black Death epidemic. The method prescribes the use of any primer combination only once in a PCR, which should never have been used in any positive control PCR reaction, and the primers should always target a genomic region never amplified before in the lab using this or any other set of primers. This ensures that no contaminating DNA from previous PCR reactions is present in the lab, which could otherwise generate false positives. Pretreatments and extensions The basic PCR process can sometimes precede or follow another technique. RT-PCR is used to reverse transcribe and amplify RNA to cDNA. PCR is preceded by a reaction using reverse transcriptase, an enzyme that converts RNA into cDNA. The two reactions may be combined in a tube, with the initial heating step of PCR being used to inactivate the transcriptase. The TTH polymerase has RT activity, and can carry out the entire reaction. RT-PCR is widely used in expression profiling, which detects the expression of a gene. It can also be used to obtain sequence of an RNA transcript, which may aid the determination of the transcription start and termination sites and facilitate mapping of the location of exons and introns in a gene sequence. Ligation-mediated PCR uses small DNA oligonucleotide linkers that are first ligated to fragments of the target DNA. PCR primers that anneal to the linker sequences are then used to amplify the target fragments. This method is deployed for DNA sequencing, genome walking, and DNA footprinting. A related technique is amplified fragment length polymorphism, which generates diagnostic fragments of a genome. Methylation specific PCR is used to identify patterns of DNA methylation at cytosine guanine islands in genomic DNA. Target DNA is first treated with sodium bisulfate, which converts on methylated cytosine bases to uracil, which is complementary to adenosine in PCR primers. Two amplifications are then carried out on the bisulfate-treated DNA, one primer set anneals to DNA with cytosines, and the other set anneals to DNA with uracil. MSP used in quantitative PCR provides quantitative information about the methylation state of a given CPG island. Other modifications Adjustments of the components in PCR is commonly used for optimal performance. The divalent magnesium ion is required for PCR polymerase activity. Lower concentrations Mg++ will increase replication fidelity, while higher concentrations will introduce more mutations. Denaturants, such as DMSO, can increase amplification specificity by destabilizing non-specific primer binding. Other chemicals, such as glycerol, are stabilizers for the activity of the polymerase during amplification. Detergents can prevent polymerase stick to itself or to the walls of the reaction tube. DNA polymerases occasionally incorporate mismatch bases into the extending strand. High fidelity PCR employs enzymes with 3-5 exonuclease activity that decreases this rate of misincorporation.
Examples of enzymes with proofreading activity include PU. Adjustments of the Mg++ and DNTP concentrations may help maximize the number of products that exactly match the original target DNA. Cold PCR is a modified polymerase chain reaction protocol that enriches variant alleles from a mixture of will type and mutation containing DNA. Primer modifications, adjustments to the synthetic oligonucleotides used as primers in PCR are a rich source of modification, normally PCR primers are chosen from an invariant part of the genome, and might be used to amplify a polymorphic area between them. In allele-specific PCR the opposite is done. At least one of the primers is chosen from a polymorphic area, with the mutations located at its three end. Under stringent conditions, a mismatched primer will not initiate replication, whereas a matched primer will. The appearance of an amplification product therefore indicates the genotype. Intersequence specific PCR is method for DNA fingerprinting that uses primers selected from segments repeated throughout a genome to produce a unique fingerprint of amplified product lengths. The use of primers from a commonly repeated segment is called ALA PCR, and can help amplify sequences adjacent these repeats. Primers can also be designed to be degenerate to Euro able to initiate replication from a large number of target locations. Whole genome amplification is a group of procedures that allow amplification to occur at many locations in an unknown genome, and which may only be available in small quantities. Other techniques use degenerate primers that are synthesized using multiple nucleotides at particular positions. Also, the primers can be synthesized with a nucleoside analog inosine, which hybridizes to three of the four normal bases. A similar technique can force PCR to perform site-directed mutagenesis. Normally the primers used in PCR are designed to be fully complementary to the target. However, the polymerase is tolerant to mismatches away from the three-feet end. Tailed primers include non-complementary sequences at their five-feet ends. A common procedure is the use of linker primers, which ultimately place restriction sites at the ends of the PCR products facilitating their later insertion into cloning vectors. An extension of the colony PCR method, is the use of vector primers. Target DNA fragments are first inserted into a cloning vector, and a single set of primers are designed for the areas of the vector flanking the insertion site. Amplification occurs for whatever DNA has been inserted. PCR can easily be modified to produce a labeled product for subsequent use as a hybridization probe. One or both primers might be used in PCR with a radioactive or fluorescent label already attached, or labels might be added after amplification. These labeling methods can be combined with asymmetric PCR to produce effective hybridization probes. DNA polymerases There are several DNA polymerases that are used in PCR, the Kalmo fragment, derived from the original DNA polymerase I from E. coli, was the first enzyme used in PCR. Because of its lack of stability at high temperature, it needs be replenished during each cycle, and therefore is not commonly used in PCR. The bacteriophage T4 DNA polymerase was also initially used in PCR. It has a higher fidelity of replication than the Kalno fragment, but is also destroyed by heat. The DNA polymerase from Thermus aquaticus was the first thermostable polymerase used in PCR and is still the one most commonly used. The enzyme can be isolated from its native source, or from its clone gene expressed in E. coli. The Stoffler fragment is made from a truncated gene for TAC polymerase and expressed in E. coli. It is lacking 5-3 exonuclease activity, and may be able to amplify longer targets than the native enzyme. It is a 61 KDAR modified form of recombinant amplitarchy Euro CHTTP, WWW6 Applied Biosystems Comp Tutorials, Fast Start Polymerase is a variant of TAC polymerase that requires strong heat activation, thereby avoiding non-specific amplification due to polymerase activity at low temperature. PU DNA polymerase, isolated from the Archaean Pyrococcus furiosus, has proofreading activity, and a five-fold decrease in the error rate of replication compared to TAC. Since errors increase as PCR progresses, 
PU is the preferred polymerase when products are to be individually cloned for sequencing or expression. Vent polymerase is an extremely themostable DNA polymerase isolated from Thermococcus littoralis. PWO DNA polymerase is a lesser used enzyme obtained from Pyrococcus wooisae from which it takes its name. TTH polymerase is a themostable polymerase from Thermus thermophilus. It has reverse transcriptase activity in the presence of Mn2 plus ions, allowing PCR amplification from RNA targets. Mechanism modifications, sometimes even the basic mechanism of PCR can be modified. Unlike normal PCR, inverse PCR allows amplification and sequencing of DNA that surrounds a known sequence. It involves initially subjecting the target DNA to a series of restriction enzyme digestions, and then circularizing the resulting fragments by self-ligation. Primers are designed to be extended outward from the known segment, resulting in amplification of the rest of the circle. This is especially useful in identifying sequences to either side of various genomic inserts. Similarly, thermal asymmetric interlaced PCR is used in isolate unknown sequences flanking a known area of the genome. Within the known sequence, tail PCR uses a nested pair of primers with differing annealing temperatures. A degenerate primer is used to amplify in the other direction from the unknown sequence. Isothermal amplification methods Some DNA amplification protocols have been developed that may be used alternatively to PCR. Helicase dependent amplification is similar to traditional PCR, but uses a constant temperature rather than cycling through denaturation and annealing extension steps. DNA helicase, an enzyme that unwinds DNA, is used in place of thermal denaturation. Pinase also uses isothermal conditions for amplification, and may be used to analyze living cells. Nicking enzyme amplification reaction referred to as NIR, is isothermal, replicating DNA at a constant temperature using a polymerase and nicking enzyme. Recombinous polymerase amplification the method uses a recombinus to specifically pair primers with double-stranded DNA on the basis of homology, thus directing DNA synthesis from defined DNA sequences present in the sample. Presence of the target sequence initiates DNA amplification, and no thermal or chemical melting of DNA is required. The reaction progresses rapidly and results in specific DNA amplification from just a few target copies to detectable levels typically within 5 a euro 10 minutes. The entire reaction system is stable as a dried formulation and does not need refrigeration. RPA can be used to replace PCR in a variety of laboratory applications and users can design their own assays. Additional reading, PCR Applications Manual the reference in QPCR, an academic and industrial information platform, WWE conferences to a streaming portal, amplify your knowledge in QPCR, DPCR and NGS. References